For the longest time, I had no clue why floats are called that way. I knew that the result of a fraction is stored in a float, and the same goes for very small numbers. But the decimal points in these numbers do not seem to float. So I wanted to find out why they are called floating point numbers. Here is what I learned. Floats must be able to store a whole bunch of different numbers. Here is a quick recap from math class. This is a set of natural numbers. They can be used to count things. This is a set of integers. An integer can be the number 0, any natural number and their negative counterparts. Fractions of two integers are called rational numbers. Their results can also be represented as decimal numbers. Since all integers can be divided by 1, rational numbers automatically also include all integers. All these numbers can be stored in a float. And there are even more numbers that can be stored in a float. Floats can contain all real numbers. Real numbers include natural numbers, integers, rational numbers and irrational numbers like pi. So I can already answer one question. What are floats for? The answer is to store real numbers. But that brings me to the next question. You already know that float is short for floating point. So what is so floating about the point in this number? Well, the key to this is how decimal numbers are stored in computers. Now, I always thought that floats were stored into integers. One integer to store the part before the decimal point and one for the part after. Since these parts can be of any length, the point is floating from left to right. So, that must be it, right? No, it works differently. Floats work much like scientific notation. Let me give you an example. I divide 2 by 10,000. I check the type of A and its value. And that is what I expected. I just told you that this number is not stored as two integers before and after the decimal point. So how is it stored? 2 divided by 10,000 can be expressed in scientific notation as 2 times 10 to the power of minus 4. Let me validate that in Python. Yep, that works. This number is known as the significant or mantissa. In this video I will use the word mantissa. And this number is called the exponent. Both will be used to store the value. So, these notations represent the same numbers. What happens if I make the exponent minus 3? Well, the decimal point floats to the right, hence floating point numbers. Now, how Python stores this information internally is not important for this video. Most programming languages use the IEEE 754 standard, which reserves some bytes for the mantissa, some for the exponent and one for the sign. Most programmers will never have to worry about the details. What is interesting for us developers is this. By just using the mantissa and exponent, you can store really small numbers efficiently. For example, 2 times 10 to the power of minus 100 is this decimal number. Using the scientific notation is much more efficient than storing all these zeros. The same thing is true for big numbers. By the way, in Python, writing a big whole number will result in an integer. To create a float, you have to use a scientific notation literal like this. I check the type of A and its decimal value. Oh, that is surprising. Why is this not a 2 with 100 zeros? Well, there is a downside when storing numbers as floats. Although they support really large and really small numbers, they come with a cost, which is the loss of precision. When dealing with extreme numbers, this might not be a problem. But precision problems can also occur when dealing with very common numbers like this. 
And to see why this is happening, click on this video right now. There you will see the floating point number precision problem.